welcome to another chapter of Iran Travel Guide. Today we are in the city of Shiraz and in one of the most beautiful gardens in this city, the Aram Garden. Yes, the Aram Garden has been on this site for over 900 years. Its present form has changed a little bit, but a couple of years ago it was invested by, the, by UNESCO, becoming a World Heritage Site as an example of Persian gardens and architecture. If we look behind us here, the main house here was built in the Qajar period by Nasser al-Malk. The, the uh, architecture here has been taken from the Zand and Safavid dynasties. And another point actually uh, about this sort of places is that in these gardens, we always talk about the ar architecture of the building, but we should know that even the garden itself has plan. The architecture is in the garden itself. As you can see, the Iranian gardens, the old Iranian gardens, have very special characteristics. One of them, as you can see, there is the water channels, the symmetricality of the buildings and the gardens, the trees and everything. And this is one of the most important things about the gardens in Iran. Yes, I mean, the gardens in Iran have uh, been such an important thing for many different reasons. The, this garden specifically, Aram Garden, the name meaning paradise, was talked about by Hafez, whose tomb we visited. The lineage of the garden, the tradition it has, is such that it's been so important, not just for one or two people, but for the whole of the Persian history that's, that this garden has had. Yes, it's true. And, and also, this sort of gardens has been always an inspiration for the artists, for poets, for people who live here, who come here. As, as he mentioned, we have all the poets, poets like Hafiz, whose tomb is also in Shiraz, has mentioned Aram Garden in his poetry. So maybe you want to join us, have a look inside and go around this beautiful place. Be with us. garden mm -hmm. and trying to find that very old tree but this garden is really big so it's not easy to find it no so there's a map here we're gonna get a help yeah, <laughs> from the map I'll hopefully give you an idea of what other things there are on offer in the garden here too so let's see. okay you are here that's us we're here this is the main house area here and we came in from the main entrance there I remember on the on the right here there were a lot of rose gardens. That was that's that was the entrance, yeah. yeah. And the, the the famous rose gardens. Are yes. There. Here's the big pool, and we came down the main avenue here. So. Okay, so have we have look. to go to Sarvana's Street, which is number thirty, 30. which is up, up there. there. Okay, so we're here. We we're need here. To keep we're going. not far actually. No, we're no, not no. far. And on both sides of here, you can see all the pomegranate trees. Yes. Or anar, as it's called. Yeah, pomegranate Persia. trees, yes. And as much as we talked about the sarv being a big symbol of Iran and the culture and, and in the poetry, anar has its own little special place. Exactly. Can, can you tell us a little bit about yeah, the anar? Anar also has a very special role in poetry. Mm. Uh, when the poets talk about love, talk uh -huh. about passion, anar is always, pomegranate always comes mm, to the middle of yeah. the poem. And again, it's something which has been there in the ancient poetry. Exactly. And in the more modern one, like Sohrab. Yes, and so on yes. Talks about we have from Hafez to Sohrab mm -hmm. about pomegranate. Anar. Yeah, can, can you look and find where are the botanic gardens? Botanic gardens. I mean, I, a lot of these are all botanic gardens. So there is one here, mm -hmm. yeah, there's, there's one greenhouse. The plant, the plant collection, the greenhouse, that's all down in this corner here, which we can go and have a look at after we found the the very old sarf Yeah, tree. as you look in the map, everything is green, so it's mm. not easy to find gardens, basically. No. <laughs> everything is a garden. And up, up here, if we look up here as well, we see a sort of rock garden and aquatic plants. It's a very different sort of style of environment. Much more water there and hopefully something a bit different to see than the traditional Persian trees as well. So, yes. let's, so let's, let's go, go to down. number 30 mm -hmm. to the sarf, to the, to the old tree in the Aram garden. Mm -hmm. Let's go. Let's so go. We have to this go that way. way. No, this, this way? way, this oh, way. This way. My sense of direction it's is much better, better than, than mine. <laughs> Let's go.
So we've been wandering around this garden for a little while, getting a bit lost, but that's no problem because it's so enjoyable and so beautiful in the shaded avenues. But we finally found it, the very old sarv tree or cypress tree. And you see how big it is. I, I feel very small, actually. I feel really small standing next to it. Yeah, it's, it's towering above us here. It's, it's majestic and beautiful in a lot of different ways. And when you get closer to the tree, you can see how old it is. The mm. skin, the skin looks the bark, so old. Yeah. The barks look so old. And that is when you understand how many histories, how many kings, mm. how many people have come and gone. Since and this, this tree started, has yeah. been standing here mm -hmm. I mean, strong. You can look at its roots and the roots just seem to flow like water outwards from under it. It's, it's been shaped in ways that we can barely imagine as humans, that sort of time scale. But let's go have a closer look at it here. Let's We're gonna go have a close look at it. Mm -hmm. You should also come and have a look. beautiful. Yeah, we're here looking down over the uh, cable car going down to the sea in the city of Ramsar. The Caspian Sea is spread out before us like a sort of tablecloth almost. Yeah. And uh, I'm glad that you can be here with us to enjoy it. Hello, welcome back to Iran Travel Guide. We are here standing right next to the cable cars of Ramsar Green City, Green. where the hotel up the top and the entertainment complex down the bottom are linked by this cable car. As we've traveled quite a bit, we've seen a lot of cable cars in Iran. Yeah, it's something yeah, of a, an Iranian specialty, you would say. Oh, uh, yes, there are lots of cable cars in the country. Mm. Uh, which and, uh, doesn't matter where, which part you go. If you go to the mountains, there are cable cars to go up the mountains, in the woods, in the jungle. If you are interested in skiing, you can take the cable cars, go to the skiing resorts, mm -hmm. yeah, no. and come back. So, something that makes it easier to sort of access all this nature, yes. access all the beautiful points, as well as some of the yes. activities in a much quicker way. Yeah, especially like for me, mm -hmm. uh, my husband, he loves hiking. He'll, mm -hmm. He can spend like hours in the, in the mountains. Days, but days. Oh, days, yeah. <laughs> but for me, I'm lazy. I prefer <laughs> to take the cable car, just go up, meet him there. So yeah. this is perfect for me. It's really ideal for me. No, it's great. I mean, we've, we've, we've taken cable cars in some other cities as well. Tehran has a very easy one to reach that goes yeah. right up to the top of the mountains looking over yeah. it. And here is, here's a lovely viewpoint as well, so. Yeah, what you can see in the background, is the Caspian Sea, the biggest lake in the world, and the cable car which connects the sea to the woods up there, up here. So it's beautiful. Great, well let's go see what else there is to offer. Come with us as we show you around this lovely place. Thank you. Welcome back to Iran Travel Guide. We are here today in the city of Ramsar, sitting with my husband, Stuart Dennison, mm -hmm. and of course, Mr. Saburi, who is a receptionist in the lovely hotel in the, uh, in the woods, on top of the woods of uh, Ramsar, which is called the Green Roof. Mm -hmm. Yes, Ramsar is a beautiful city on the coast of the Caspian Sea. There's sea, there's jungle, there's mountains all together. And Mr. Saburi here has been a very good host, so thank, thank you very much. Pleasure. Thank you for the welcome. Can you tell us a little bit about the history of this place and what's here now? 
Well, I think the history of this hotel just dates back three years ago, mm -hmm. and uh, we'll just start it by the cooperation of some brothers. Mm -hmm. We just call it okay. Mr. Najafiz. Mm -hmm. There are seven brothers and just work hard to just uh, build this hotel. Uh -huh. And uh, well, um, it's been a really lovely, marvelously outstanding mm -hmm. hotel. I think I just have to say in Iran because it is absorbing a lot of just tourists from mm -hmm. all corners of Iran. Yeah, okay. How many uh, people can you host at the same time in this at place? At the same time, if I am not mistaken, around 150. Okay, oh, right. great. And you say lots of tourists have come here from yeah, all over Iran. Definitely. Have foreign tourists come here much as well? Well, yup. And uh, well, uh, from different countries, mm -hmm. mostly I think Asians and uh, Asian tourists and uh, some African from the north. Okay, great. North sure. Africa, so, yes. And, uh, so what does this place have to offer in terms of like the nature and also the other facilities? Sure, that oh, sure. I think we have lots of things to offer. Mm. We got the thing uh, here. I think if we uh, talk about the hotel, we just have to say the restaurant, mm -hmm. the coffee shop and the zip line. And uh, we get the really nice bird worms. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, bird's eye view from okay. the top of the hotel. Yes, and I saw that. Yeah, yeah. It's beautiful. I think you can no. have a great time out there on top of the hotel, mm -hmm. and uh, you won't, you shouldn't really miss it. I think. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Very good. No, we've had a we've had a look around, and we've seen some of the things it has to offer, and, yeah. and we've, it's been very very nice so far. Iran Travel Guide. We're here in a restaurant in the city of Mashhad looking at some of the dishes available that you can try on your trip here. Iran's famous for all sorts of different things, the culture, the poetry, the history, but also its food is deservedly famous. Yeah, that's true. Iranian recipe and cuisines are very famous in Middle East and in this part of the world. For me, this is the best food you can find anywhere in the world. What you want from a food, you can find it in Iranian recipe. Different taste, different sort of foods you can find it here. The traditional food specifically, mm -hmm. it's very different from Western foods and from food from the countries in this area. But another thing is that Iran is, doesn't serve only the Iranian food. No, it doesn't. No, there's a whole variety of Western food, as well as food from all over Asia in different places. You know, there are, you can find Chinese food here, Indian food here, you can also find pizza and hamburgers. There's a huge variety of different things, some of which are done in a very Iranian way. There's a variety of tastes, as you're explaining. Tastes like a sour taste, which is something which makes, for me at least, Iranian cuisine unique. Yes, and uh, 
anywhere in this country you travel, you find all these different varieties of food. Mm -hmm. And if you have spe different tastes or special type of taste, like if you're vegetarian, there are options for you here. If you are uh, a bit uh, kind of sensitive about what you eat, this is, you can find whatever you want here, basically. Whatever you, wa you want, you can find it in this place. Yeah, there's a huge range of different things. I mean, Iran has two seas, one in the north, the Caspian Sea, and one in the south, the Persian Gulf, both of which provide their own different range of seafood. So wherever you are in the country, whether you're down south in Bandar Abbas or in Shiraz, you can find the fish from the sea there. Likewise, if you're in the north or in Tehran, you can find all different fish from there, including freshwater fish like trout. Yeah, and the river fish. There are lots of rivers that you can get, f do fishing there. You can go do fishing there, grab the fish, come home and cook it at home. Yeah, or, or camping, yeah, cook or it camping. on the barbecue out there. Yeah. yeah, or if you're not that active, you can just go to a restaurant in the buy city it. and buy it and eat it. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, one of the best ways in which uh, things are cooked here, and one of the most famous ways, for, including fish, is kebabbing. So the kebabs you, you may know from other circumstances, but Iranian kebabs are a bit different. They have very long skewers, which the, the meat is roasted on, different types of meat, and that meat is then served up with generally rice or bread or other vegetables. Not only kebabs of Iran are famous, but also Iran's, Iranian curries are very famous, or as we call them, horesh. They are like a curry which are served with rice, and you eat them with rice. In general, Iranian recipes has a little bit of sour taste, it's not at all strong, but it's something which you will enjoy it. In each of the Iranian curries, you can find this taste. And there are like varieties of the curries you can have with rice. Alongside that, there's a whole bunch of side dishes which go really well with it to augment the taste. One of the most interesting for me is the pickles. There are a huge amount of pickles, from pickled cucumber or gherkins, which you may know, to everything from pickled garlic and even sort of pickled sauces that come together. So mixing those in to add a little bit of spice, a little bit of crunch, or a little bit of different taste, something to give it something special. That's one of the, my favorite things to mix with food here. But you should know that eating in Iran is not only the matter of what you eat. The food is important, of course, but Iranian love to sit together and eat the food together, talk over and talk about what happened in the day to them, to the whole family. So if you're coming to Iran, if you're going to a restaurant or if you're a guest at some Iranian's house, sit with them, enjoy your food, and have a nice chat with the family. We're gonna take you to have a look around the other places. Stay tuned with Iran Travel Guide. We have more to come for you. And make sure you don't miss out on Tadik. You'll find out what that is when you come here. <laughs> Let's go. Let's go. I see you're quite excited mm, with well, the food. Of course, yeah. How could I not be? <laughs> so much to try, so many different things.
here with Ali, who is a tourist from Saudi Arabia. Welcome to Iran. Thank you. And thank you for your time. Uh, have you been in Iran before? It's your first time. No, uh, I've been here before uh, eight times. Almost. Eight times. Yes. What is the reason you come to Iran? I came here to uh, visit the Holy Shrine. And sometimes, if we have time, we go to north of, of, north of Tehran and other cities like home. Uh, how do you find Iran? How do you find the people? Very kind people and uh, uh, they welcome any tourist, tourist coming to, to Iran, especially uh, in the Holy Shrine. When you go to the Holy Shrine, you feel like the Holy Shrine in Saudi Arabia. Okay. So the religion here is obviously very important for the city and for you as well. What, um, yeah, what can you describe the feeling you have when you go to the shrine? How does it feel for you? Feeling, feel freedom to do you pray, you do dua in, in the in the whole shrine. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Very good. And what other aspect of Iranian life you like? Like, do you like the food? You like the culture? Actually, uh, the food, Iranian food, is uh, very likable by uh, people in, from in GCC, especially in Saudi Arabia. Mm. For example, we have many restaurants, Iranian restaurants in Saudi Arabia. So when we are, came to Iran, we enjoy uh, eating the many cuisine. Mm -hmm. Do you have a favorite one you like? Actually, uh, uh, for me, I like, for example, the. Uh, Jalou mm -hmm. uh, for family, I don't know, they have different <laughs> jobs. <laughs> cool. Sure. And have you been in like historic sites of Iran as well? Like in cities like Shiraz, Isfahan? Actually not yet, but I'm planning uh, for future to go to those cities. Mm -hmm. Okay, sure. And you travel here with your family? Yes, um, we came with family as pilgrim to go mm -hmm. to see, go to the Holy Shrine, Imam Musa Imam how, how do you find it as a family? Is it difficult having a whole family or are there good facilities for tourists here? That's good facilities. I mean, you can, uh, you can manage it easily and it's mm -hmm. not difficult. And we have many choices here to stay, for example, in high five-star hotel or you can stay even in three-star hotel. Okay. And how about the safety of the country? How do you find it? Very have safe. you ever had any problem in Iran? No, I didn't have any problem. I feel so safe. But some in the big cities, it's very crowded. I mean. Yeah. But <laughs> that's true with any big cities. Yeah, absolutely. But yeah, so um, what else? I mean, you would would you advise other tourists to come to to Iran? Yes, um, so I encourage everybody to come to Iran, especially in North Iran, to see the the green areas and go to this uh, the sea, uh, the Caspian, Caspian Sea, sea yes. as well to see other other cities because. Uh, we call it, it's like uh, Jannah, we call it. A heaven. Like yeah. heaven, yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Great, that, that's, that's very nice to hear. And thank you so much. Thank for you for your time. For to us. And I hope you enjoy the rest of your trip here and that you come, keep coming back as well. You're welcome. Thank you for your time. Thank, thank you. you so much. Thanks thank so you. Much.